Welcome to the Good Fight Radio Show, a program dedicated to bringing you vital and uncompromised truths that you won't hear in the mainstream media, discussing contemporary issues in light of the Bible and how these issues relate to family, culture, and the church. The heart of this show is to glorify Jesus Christ and expose the works of darkness as He is commanded in Ephesians 5.11. Now here's your host, Good Fight Ministries' own Chad Davidson. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And with me, as always, is the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California, Pastor Joe Schimmel. How are we doing today? Blessed in Jesus, brother. Amen, amen. Also with us, as always, is the show's producer, Tony Palacio. How are you doing today, bro? I'm doing awesome today. Well, praise God. You might have heard in the news that Kanye West is running for president. (laughs) I don't know know about... You praise God you're here. You know, we don't know about the uh, president thing, but, uh, but nonetheless, praise God that you are here listening to us today. And I- I'm excited because if you're here, hopefully you were also with us this last Friday as we went through Bethel's Sozo Obsession as the third part of our video series examining the teaching of Bethel's uh, Bethel just hit on Friday. So if you haven't watched it yet, Get involved, and if you haven't been there for a live premiere, I encourage you this Friday for the last one that we're going to be doing, the fourth part of our four-part series coming up this week, I really encourage you to get involved with the premiere that will be at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and on Friday, the se- the 17th, Tony? No, I'm sorry, I'm a week off, right? Or is that right? Yeah, yeah it'll be Friday the 17th. 17th. Um, and we really would love for, to have you guys involved on that show talking with us on there because some of the group on there you guys are really really awesome so i i love getting involved on there and talking with you guys on our live stream um or i'm sorry on live premiere on facebook on our youtube channel get involved get on there and and encourage people in it because i think we're doing a it's an awesome awesome video but with all that we're actually going to be talking not about kanye west's uh esteem to be president but The fact that he has come out publicly in an interview on Forbes magazine on a topic that we've covered a ton as a ministry. It's something that we actually have an entire video on this, and I'll let Tony talk about that a little bit later when we get a little deeper into this. But he opens up about something that we've noticed very, very clearly when it comes to the so-called Black Lives Matter movement, and that has to do a lot with the fact that it seems that only certain black lives matter and the ones of the infant black children that are being slaughtered just ad nauseum by Planned Parenthood and the fact that its founder would be is probably it just would be if she wasn't in Hades right now would be smiling to see that this wickedness has been able to completely go forward exactly what she had wanted for all these years to kill off little black boys and girls and the fact is is that a lot of people in the public have a tough time talking about this i've heard benjamin watson bring it up i've heard a few you know black believers come out and say hey they're slaughtering these babies but ultimately a lot of times it's something that goes by the wayside and the fact is is that kanye west of all people has come out and been very vocal about the fact that planned parenthood has been put there to kill black babies what do you think about this joe yeah, I think it's a sick joke that Planned Parenthood is known for health care. Yeah. I mean, it's the farthest thing from health care as possible. You go in there, you you, you, you know, you kill your baby. It's, it's hard. I think it's like 3% of their policies are based on health care. They make, I, I don't know how much money they make on, you know, baby organs, but they've made money on that as well. So it's heartbreaking. We live in a, a nation where we we watch uh, movies on the Holocaust and or documentaries and, of course, movies and we decry the Holocaust as being really wicked because, you know, six million Jews were put to death by Nazi Germany. But now we're at over 61 million babies, 10 times. I mean, it'd make Hitler proud. Six, 60 million plus babies murdered uh, through in, in here in the United States of America. And could you imagine, you know, the Nazis, say, say, the, Holoc- say the United States Holocaust against babies had been, you know, in the 1930s. You know, late 30s and so forth, into the early 40s, and 
Uh, and then the Nazi Holocaust was happening today. And the Germans were looking back saying, watching all these documentaries on how these Americans, how could they stand by and watch 60 million babies be killed while they're killing Jews? Six million of them. And, and if they were aware of that, they'd be considered the biggest hypocrites in the world. You're killing innocent people too. You're killing you know, Jews in the ovens. What are you talking about? Well, it's reversed. We're doing that. We're looking back and saying, hey, this is wicked, but it's, it's taking place here in our country, 60 plus million people. And I believe Kanye West in his statements, I mean, literally, uh, he says, Planned Parenthoods have been placed inside cities by white supremacists to do the devil's work. And, you know, the jury's still out on Kanye in some ways, but I don't think we could have actually said that better. It is the devil's work. Uh, you know, killing babies. I mean, go back and look at what Pharaoh did, killing babies. Look what Herod did. All, all because they both wanted to be godlike figures. And uh, we'll be getting another show this week and we'll be looking at, uh, you know, this hyper feminism and Satanism and how that's really what it's about. It's about us playing God and taking people's lives into our hands. And it's quite, quite amazing when you think about it. Well, didn't Margaret Sanger think she was a god too? And that's a. Yeah, she had that godlike. That was that was her yeah. complex. So no wonder that she had that that attitude about it. Yeah, she was she was a feminist, and uh, we'll be getting into that in one of our shows this week, which you guys don't want to miss. We know what's going on, you know, and this is one of the few shows out there that blows the whistle on these kinds of issues, and we're not afraid to go deep and, and, and get into it, and uh, be we're not concerned about being politically correct, but by the grace of God, we'll be biblically correct and Amen. and point people to the Lord and and life and even forgiveness if you've committed an abortion. Uh, and you're, you're a woman or you're a man and you've encouraged a woman to do it because you're you're just as guilty. It's not a man-woman issue. I think men bear uh, a more responsibility in some ways because they sit back and uh, oftentimes push the woman into killing the baby. And women often know intrinsically yeah. that they've got a baby in them. Yeah, it's interesting. There's even been uh, said that you know, pro sports players will have contracts signed with women that they'll sleep with that if they do get pregnant, they must have an abortion. Yeah, I think Reddick is one of those guys, yeah, right? Yeah, Reddick's one of the rumors, yeah. Really heartbreaking. Yep. Uh, so if that's, you know, I've heard that. I'm not sure if he's one of the guys, but quite sad, actually, because now he nails something here, and this is what we've been, we've been exposing this for years. We have a video uh, called The Secret, uh, The Dark Secrets of Planned Parenthood that we did years and years ago, and we point out that they literally target are targeting black neighborhoods from the beginning. So when he talks about the devil's work, no, no. I mean, Satan's a murderer from the beginning. Jesus said in John chapter eight, he inspires murder. But we're talking about. Uh, he also calls it white supremacism, and a lot of things have been called white supremacy lately. And sometimes that word is used accurately. Sometimes it's used uh, more generally and stereotypically to where it becomes can even become a statement to where you can broad brush certain people because you know, like all white people are white supremacists because they live in the United States of America, even though they don't even have uh, ancestors that were involved in the slave trade or what have you, that would be an overkill, right? But when Kanye West talks about Planned Parenthood be, being based upon white supremacy, uh, there's no way you can argue around it if you're mm -hmm. an honest person because Margaret Sanger was a white supremacist mm -hmm. and she was targeting black kids. I've got some great quotes we'll get into a little bit in a little bit. But not only that, even to this day, disproportionately there are Planned Parenthood clinics in black neighborhoods compared to other neighborhoods. So the legacy goes on it. And these are... Millions, you guys, millions of black children that have been killed. Think of it this way. Black folks represent about 13% of the nation. Yet almost 20 million of the 61 million babies killed, almost a third, are black children. And this was by design. You don't have to say, oh, this is a conspiracy, you know, that's what you guys might think. No, that's right from the witch's mouth, okay? Yep. Right from Margaret Sanger's mouth. Uh, who was, by the way, very much into the occult and into doing the devil's work and rad a radical feminist. I mean, she made her husband live on the other side of the house with a, a line of demarcation in the middle, and he couldn't even see her unless he called her up and got her permission. Probably for you the know? best, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have a Bobbit situation, maybe. You know? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's quite crazy. Yourself, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, one of, the, one of the statements that she made is, how are we to breed a race of human thoroughbreds unless we follow the same plan? So she was into eugenics, mm -hmm. which is basically applying what people have done with animals to human beings. And she felt that black folks were the inferior race and they must be weeded out. In fact, she called them weeds. 
In fact, she states, we must take this country or this uh, yeah, country into a garden of children. We must make this country into a garden of children instead of a disorderly back lot overrun with human weeds. And we look at the context in which she makes these statements, which has become really clear in a minute. She was, uh, she seemed to have a real hatred uh, and disdain uh, for black folks. And by the way, this is the woman that uh, Hillary Clinton called her hero, you know? And we, we could talk about later, I mean, the whole legacy of the democratic movement being racist from way back in the you know mid-1800s uh, with, you know, the Confederacy was basically a bunch of Democrats, you know? We'll get into that a little bit maybe as well. But it's interesting because the Nazis were using eugenics and the early Nazis were getting involved in eugenics and abortion became legal in Nazi Germany. One of the first things that Hitler did to kind of, you know, pave the way for euthanasia and the killing off of uh, those who were uh, physically and mentally challenged, and then, of course, the Jews. So uh, just basically uh, just a wicked view of life. And it's interesting because I was talking to a gentleman yesterday. I was doing some marriage, not marriage counseling, some just, you know, basically discipleship counseling of a brother that I've seen a few times, really neat guy named John, excited about the Lord. You know, he's probably in his mid-20s or so. And uh, he came up to me and he asked if he could get some counsel and you know what, usually it's hard to find a time, but I can try to squeeze something in, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, why not right now? You go, what are you doing after after Bible study? Because this was after study. I go, what are you doing? You know, I go, let's go grab something. Eat real quick, you know. And we got together and Travis showed up. But it was really interesting to hear his testimony because Brother Travis keyed into it, was part of it. And he says, you know, I was raised in L.A., very liberal, very liberal upbringing, you know. And I was taught anything goes, basically. You know, everything's acceptable. It was reinforced by living in Los Angeles. And then he says, you know what? He goes, I was seeing women or men dressing like women, though. And it was like, in, in inside I felt, even though I've been taught it's okay, it seems so wrong. And then he said, and then I started looking at the issue of abortion. And he goes, and it just, I was raised to think it's okay, but it didn't sit with me. I thought, if they ever say they've discovered, this is kind of interesting comment he made. He said, they ever say they discovered life on another planet. Uh, and it's just, you know, some kind of just, it's not really life. I'm going to say it's not life. If a baby's not life, there's nothing that's life, you know? And I thought, well, it's kind of interesting that he was thinking about sin and how it seems like we really have maybe offended, that there's a creator and we've offended him. And then Travis put a, uh, you know, testimonial, I don't know if it was on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, of sin and sin being the problem behind what's going on in the world today. He said, I watched it. This was real recent. <laughs> And he goes, it convicted me. I realized he's right. I got tra- He said he knew Travis from high school, got in touch with him. Travis shared the gospel with him. He got saved. But he said, I understand the values and how they fit in and Christ's you know, death and resurrection, but I want to understand the story. How does this all fit together? So, mm. you know, uh, we got together, and t- you know, three hours later, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I doubled the cost, you know, which was zero, free. <laughs> we just got together and had a great chat. And, and uh, he said, man, it made a lot of sense. Really bright guy, so I'm praying the Lord uses him mightily, you know, and he grows. But it's interesting. We know we know deep down it's wrong to kill babies, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Anybody seeing a baby being punched on or mistreated, spit upon, would think that's wicked. But just before they come out of the womb, it's just as wicked. Then all of a sudden change, and all of a sudden a halo comes around their head when they come out of the womb. They're the same baby they were five minutes before they came out of the womb and, you know, months before they came out of the womb. And at conception, it's got all their DNA and everything. So this is radically sick, radically perverse. In fact, she said of eugenics. And the eugenics was the idea of killing off and, you know, sterilizing certain people. So they went breed, killing off babies and so forth. So uh, they couldn't grow up. And so you can have a superior race. And she said, Margaret Sanger, February 1919, uh, in the birth control review eugenics without birth control seems to us a house built upon sands it is at the mercy of the rising stream of the unfit so she said eugenics has to include birth control which for Planned Parenthood today and for her was killing babies folks were it's just amazing that we're still killing babies but you know again it's what the Bible warns about amen uh in fact Rebecca uh Debro, uh, she's the author that wrote uh, The Nation back in 2007. She acknowledges, it's hard to dismiss, hard to dismiss are the critiques of black feminists like Angela Davis, who points out 
the minority woman's long-standing alienation from mainstream white feminism has its roots in Sanger's association with eugenics. It wasn't just an association. She was promoting the killing off of black babies in eugenics. How wicked is this? And, and she's saying, I mean, there's a number of black men that are rising up and women, thank God. I mean, uh, Martin Luther King's niece has been very prominent, very outspoken uh, and talking about her father, Martin Luther King Jr. was anti-abortion, believed it was murder. And she's come out strongly against it. You have Ben Carson has spoken against it. You just mentioned uh, Ben Watson and so forth. And I'm praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, rise more and more black men and black women up to save black children and may black lives matter right down to the children, Father, the most innocent of all people, Father. May black children's lives matter. I mean, how many of these kids that have been killed, and by the way, about half of these babies that are murdered are little girls. So much for feminism and caring about yeah. the rights of, of, of females, right? It's just all so perverse. It's all so ironic. It's all so contradictory. And it just blows me away that we're here. But I'm encouraging. I mean, how many of these these black folks could be doctors and 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 you know nurses and and you know CEOs and have all these opportunities and just alive, just yeah, to to be a living person and have a life. Their lives are snuffed out. This is murder. We're not talking about birth control here, folks. Talk about after there's a conception, all the way up to nine months kids being murdered in the womb. So this is really, really heartbreaking. A direct quote from Margaret Sanger, and I think this is important, guys, because she said we need to get a few uh, black ministers mm. to represent us. And we use this quote in our Planned Parenthood, uh, on, you know, the Dark Secrets of Planned Parenthood video, and it's one of the most striking. These, by the way, the quotes I'm giving you right now aren't disputed quotes whether she said this or not. You just go through her books, you go through their magazines, and there they are, you know? Uh, in fact, they'll say, well, you had to understand the times, you know. That's how some of the Planned Parenthood leaders have tried to get around yep. it. Yeah, well, Hitler, you just have to understand the times. He wasn't that bad. Give me a break, man. Yeah. That's an old, tired, you know, worn out lie, man. A direct quote from Mark Sanger goes like this. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. This is sick, man. She's talking about getting some wolves in sheep's clothing, really. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through religious appeal. We do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. Did you hear that, folks? Hmm. Okay, I hope you're not eating because you might choke on whatever you're eating, man. Because she says, we do not want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. How could that not make you angry right there? That is wicked. That is satanic. That is demonic. She's admitting wanting to exterminate the black or African population. How does it make her any better than Hitler who wanted to exterminate the Jewish population? She just didn't have the, the means to do it all, but she's done a lot. Almost 20 million babies later here in the United States alone, not to mention the hundreds of millions murdered around the world with Planned Parenthood's help. Mm. We don't want the word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister, check this out, and she says, and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. Hmm. So deceptive. Now, brothers and sisters, man, I'm going to read that whole thing again in just one quotation because this, to me, is one of the most chilling things I've ever read, and this is the founder of Planned Parenthood. It was founded on, on white supremacy and not just white people being superior to black people, but murdering the, the, the black population off, exterminating, as she says, the, the black population. This is Hillary, Hillary Clinton's, you know, her, her one her of her hero, idols, yeah. her heroes, you know. It just blows me away. She states, the most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. And think of all these, you know, Jesse Jackson and all these guys. And I can give you a big quote I want this time, but from Jesse Jackson where he talks about the wickedness of abortion. But then he turned his coat on that. He goes, uh, we do not want, or she goes, we do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. So if you're, you know, if you're against having your race exterminated and black kids killed, you're rebellious. <laughs> yeah. You're rebellious not to God because the Lord says thou shalt not murder. The Lord condemns uh, abortion, which we'll talk about maybe some scriptures on that a little bit later in the show. But here she is. She's the rebel, but she's not starting with herself. She's starting with them. So this just blows me away when you read these types of quotes from her. And by the way, you know what? Any black man 
that's killed by a white officer and the white officer's knee is on his neck and it and it's not just you know a white man or black man being and whether a white man or brown man whoever uh th- those any cops that do are abusive toward people they they, they should be just rooted out obviously mm. i think all everybody agreed that what that man did to that to that uh uh, Floyd to Floyd man should have been condemned. I don't don't I didn't hear people justifying it saying, you know what? It's okay. I think I think it was good that he did that. You hear one person say that. Mm-mm. But this is out now wicked what she's saying. And guess what? I don't there's a lot of Margaret Sanger uh statues. I've seen a lot of Margaret yeah, and Sanger. Busts mm-hmm. and things like guess what? And busts, I've never seen one of those go down. You know? You really care about black lives and they really matter. These They're are not standing out in front million. of Planned Parenthood. Yeah, these are 20 million babies black children that have been butchered but they're not toppling these you know mm-hmm. i'm not advocating advocating they be toppled but i i do advocate that her her legacy and planned parenthood be verbally condemned and warned against because i think a lot of black folks just guess what i mean think about it she wants there to be a propaganda campaign so i think she's been very successful in waging a propaganda campaign saying hey butchering your babies is good but her motivation as we're seeing was what extermination for the sake Genics, of yeah. populating and making more you know allowing white supremacy allowing whites to uh you know have supremacy and, and flourish in the world by the way her whole thing her deal was uh giving them a choice black folks a choice of either being segregated or being sterilized I'm talking about adults now kill your babies we want to kill your babies but we want you sterilized or segregated from white folks this is just you know and by the way Whatever happened? To, how come we're not seeing defund Planned Parenthood? Mm-hmm. Seeing defund the police, but what happened to you know defund Planned Parenthood? We're not seeing things like this, and it just shows you how duped so many people are. You know, and it's it's just really sad. And I encourage people to be praying for our black brothers and sisters in Christ that uh, they'd have strength to stand up because they're going through a lot of pressure right now, and that they would also be able to, they'd be able to point these things out because when I see you know, people standing up for this and uh, for Planned Parenthood right now in the face of this, I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, wow, there's no shame. These same liberals who are claiming Black Lives Matter, which we believe 100%. We mm-hmm. we believe it more so than any liberal that's an atheist because we believe they're creating, that black folks, just like white yeah. people, are creating the image of God and that Jesus died for them and they're as much human as we are mm-hmm. and that we should walk arm in arm against evil. That was something I had a, a big struggle with was the fact that you had these people out there marching the streets and in, in Simi Valley most of the people marching here were white guys and a lot of them and some of them I Almost actually know were atheists and yeah. you're like no and and I saw a Babylon B uh, satire article and it was like atheists start new campaign no life matters and the fact is is that that's ultimately what you actually have to come to believe yeah. as an atheist is that you're just lying you're lying. All you're doing is stealing ideas from the Christian narrative and saying, oh, I'll hold to these certain aspects and I'll build this God, which is really just me looking in the mirror. I'll build this God into my own image and then I'll have certain morals that I hold to. And honestly, they just go with whatever society is just okay with at the time. No, that's a great point. I mean, back to Richard Dawkins, the poster boy of atheism, you know, we just dance to our genes and life is meaningless and purposeless and, you know, it's, you know, pitiless indifference, you know? There's no real meaning to life. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting, too, when you look at the history, because the propaganda campaign has been so successful that most, you know, people, black, white, Hispanic, whatever, are unaware that the Democrats, historically, have been the ones that have been not only pro-baby murder, but pro-slavery, pro-segregation. In fact, it's interesting, people are unaware that in the 1850s the republican party and i'm first and foremost a christian you know i don't like i'm not like i'm a republican be a republican but i'm just historically you know what's going on 1850s the republican party started as the anti-slave party you know and and i've quoted not too long ago when we're dealing with racism more uh a speech by the one who ran against abraham lincoln who through the civil war brought an end to slavery and there's a lot of quotes to show you that that was his main motive the guy he was douglas who was uh, going against was saying I'm for white supremacy. You know, he made it really clear the Democrat and the Dred Scott. There was all it was a Democratic thing. And in 1864, April 8th of 1864, after the Civil War, the 13th Amendment ended slavery. Hundred percent Republicans in Congress voted for the 13th Amendment. Less than half of the Democrats voted for it. Fast forward a hundred years 
further. And 80% of Republicans voted for the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Only 63% of Democrats voted for the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Think about it. Fast forward 50 years later, where we're at right now. All, almost all, I think pretty much all, Republicans are against killing black babies through abortion and all babies. And most liberals are for killing black babies and all babies in the womb. So, I mean... And they're standing there. What's changed? Mar- people are marching. And I'm sorry, brothers and sisters in Christ, I know you're trying to march for, hey, you want to say, hey, this is messed up, we don't like injustice. But the fact is, you're marching arm in arm a lot of times with people that are completely okay with this butchering. Yeah. And that's that's the fact. We are not to be evenly yoked with them. I saw someone talking about how they're going to donate... I think it was Patty Mills on the Spurs. I'm donating my whole salary to Black Lives Matter with a with this mm-hmm. he is greater than I hat on. And I just said to myself, yeah. do you realize they want to destroy the nuclear family? Yeah. Do you realize That's that on their they, website. Th- yeah. that is literally on their website? And we're not talking about Black Lives Matter, people saying Black Lives Matter. We agree with that statement. They do. We believe Black Lives Matter, absolutely Black li- Lives, Babies Lives Matter. What we're talking about is the elitists in the movement who are being run and being used by white elitists. By trained Marxists. Even as Sanger mm-hmm. wanted to use use the ministers no exactly and and it's something that breaks my heart because i look at that and i'm saying guys do you not realize what you're donating to do you not realize what you're actually partaking yeah. in 1.5 billion plus now they have yeah and then it's just going to get funneled to the democratic party yeah, is what's going to take right. place sadly and, and it's really heartbreaking to me I, i've seen brothers in christ and seen people getting involved in this and i i even listened to somebody that made a video and they said, I'm, I was excited to see witches out there supporting. He, he's a worship leader, pastor, mm. worship leader. And, absolutely and amazing. Absolutely. It's sad. Yeah. Check this out. Sanger. Okay. All you have to do is read her books. Sanger says, quote, more children from the fit, less from the unfit. That's the chief aim of birth control. Sanger invited Hitler's top racial advisor. She's working with the Nazis, uh, Eugene Fisher, to a lecture in the United States. While Loth- uh, well, I'm sorry, Lothrop Stoddard, one of Sanger's advisors, went to Germany to meet Hitler. Check this out, guys. Stoddard, while associated with Sanger, wrote a racist book entitled The Rising Tide of Color Against White World Supremacy. Sanger published articles in her magazine by Ernst Rudin, an infamous Nazi race specialist. Brothers and sisters, the scriptures are very clear. God made us in his image. The scriptures tell us that he knew us in our mother's womb. Jeremiah 1, 5, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, made in the image of God. Psalm 139, verses 13 through 16. For you formed my inward parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it full well. Wow, you guys. I mean, brothers and sisters, we know the scriptures warn, thou shalt not murder in Exodus 20, 13. Genesis 9, 6, whoever sheds the blood of man by man, his blood will be shed for the image of God made he him. Brothers and sisters, this is serious. If you've been involved in abortion, repent because Jesus paid for those sins. And if you get right and repent and show, tell, show the Lord your heart broken over your sin and repent and cry out to him, you'll be forgiven through what Christ did. Make sure you're following him. He died for you. He rose again and conquered the grave. We love you guys. Amen. You've been listening to the Good Fight Radio Show brought to you by Good Fight Ministries. If you're blessed by this show and would like to partner with us, won't you consider visiting our support page at goodfight.org? Or you can write to us at P.O. Box 2202, Simi Valley, California, 93062, or call us toll-free at 1-866-JC-TRUTH. That's 1-866-528-7884. We hope you'll tune in next time on the Good Fight Radio Show.